guy asked me what I did this morning. I said, I rescue animals. They look at you weird. They go, why? Why do you do that? So they can understand if you're in something else and you give some charity time to doing stuff, oh yeah, that's great. But if you just say, well, I rescue animals, they go, you rescue animals? Like, well, what do you do with them? You know, right away, what do you do with them? Like, where's the angle? How, how, you can't just be doing this for them. What, what's in it for you? So if I say I, I make movies and I'm over here doing this a few times a week, then they get that. Oh, this is his fun. He has fun. Oh, I get it. And then they understand that. It's like feeding an animal at the zoo. You know, one of the greatest delights is owning a pet. Just seeing and cuddling a puppy for the first time is a wonderful feeling. When that puppy grows up, to some people, though, it can become a burden. Either the family has to move away, or they just don't want the animal because it becomes too much to handle. Some people are either too busy or too insensitive to find a proper new home for their unwanted pet. So they take the animal and take the easy way out and abandon it. Leo Grillo hunts dogs. He came to California to become an actor, but spends most of his time looking and caring for the hundreds of dogs left abandoned by their former owners. I've been doing this for about four years now. I came out here and found 35 dogs uh, at, at that first count, and I fell in love with them. I started feeding them. I watched them jump into the food with their elbows and protect it and eat it looked into their faces and they were to me the same as my own pet this dog at my feet this is kingsley the malamute kingsley was abandoned up here about five months ago the day i found him he couldn't walk he was barely able to stand he was so sore so we took him right to the vets they stripped him down and they found over a hundred foxtail abscesses on his body now foxtails is something that grows in the grass people don't even know it can kill a dog gypsy is a red bone hound dog um, she was about six months old when I found her. She was out here starving. Uh, she's never lost her spirit. So I picked her up, put her in the car, and we fattened her up now, and she's uh, available for adoption. The reason people abandon their animals in the first place, uh, usually they're moving and can't take the dog or the cat with them. And as opposed to bringing them to the shelter where they know they'll probably, you know, 85% chance they'll end up being put, put to sleep, uh, they come out here and they let them go. During the week, after they've abandoned the animal, the animal slowly starves and they get very depressed. They're, they were in a home, they've spent a lot of time in a very loving home, all of a sudden they're out here. They don't know where anything is, what happened. Where's the food at five o'clock? Where do I sleep? So from their point of view, they don't know what's going on. That's a lot of stress. Add the bad weather to that, add the disease, and within a few weeks you have uh, an animal dying very, very cruelly, very slowly, and we've had them out here in convulsions, very painful death from encephalitis, from distemper. And they go right out, crawl away and die very painfully, it takes them a whole day. And if people saw this, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't, they wouldn't abandon. I met Leo at Charles Conrad's acting studio. And he was just getting involved in the rescue effort and becoming a uh, personified animal lover <laughs> for everybody, for the entire world. You know, you come to class exhausted sometimes, don't you? Because you've been out, out in the woods somewhere from 12 to 4 or something like that, waiting for the dog, you know, had the little pups and all that sort of stuff to come in. I mean, you know, he was into a special thing, really. Calls, it was always seen to be at night. And he was just always doing that. I mean, he always kept up with the classes. But that's, but that, that was his thing. I was on my way to class and I stopped to feed the dogs and uh, I, you know, would be able to pick a couple of them up. I put them in the car. I'm on my way to class. So I would go to Charles's and I said, you know, Charles, I got a problem. I've got, you know, four hours of workshop here we're going to do today, but I've got this dog. Can I let him run around the, you know, the backyard here? And he'd say, oh, hell, bring him in. Well, what we did is we just got, I just, Leo, let's get pictures of dogs that you have and you're looking for adoption and you know put it we had the billboard here and all that sort of stuff we'll have a picture of the thing but you know nothing sells like a picture and you know the kids acting kids i mean you know they can be the worst bastards in the world but they're also some they they got a big heart you know that kind of thing 
And, uh, you know, they'd look at it and say, gee, what's that? I said, well, they're not looking for adoption and all that sort of stuff. They'd say, oh, God, gee whiz, I'd like to see that dog. And then we brought some dogs in there. Well, you bring a couple of dogs in there and, you know, who doesn't want to take them home with them? Even though I'd say, gee, I don't know if I can do this and that and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, with Dee Wallace, I mean, she, you know, she just adored her dogs and everything else and everything. And I knew class was getting ready to start in like five minutes and you were supposed to be there 15 minutes ago. So I was like freaked anyway. And I walked in and I saw everybody's butt <laughs> down on the floor. I mean, literally, I walked in and everybody's bottoms were underneath this desk. And I said, okay, what's going on? And he said, oh, Leo brought this little dog and blah, 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 and he won't come to anybody and she's scared to death and we're all trying to get her out. And, and I threw my stuff down and I looked at her and I went, oh, she's so cute, come here. And bam, there she was. Just, it was like she was waiting and she went, I'll take that sucker. <laughs> I went home from acting class that day with Rugsy. He had just found her literally on the way to class. I thought she was brown. By the time we gave her a bath, she was light blonde. That's how much dirt and, and fleas, totally infested with fleas. We had to have two of her teeth pulled. She had something wrong with one of her paws. She had ear infections. I mean, the dog was a nightmare of a mess. And it had just been so abused, bless her heart, it took us a, literally about a year before we could get her to even stay in the room when we walked in. I really believe the first dog I had was the dog that Leo, that I got from Leo, where I took care of it because it needed help and all that, because it had some surgery. And then I fell in love with her, and I've, I, I hate to say that, I've been in love with her ever since. I first met Leo actually through an article that was written about him in the LA Times. I remember opening the paper up. There was a picture of him standing on top of this old station wagon with binoculars in his hands overlooking the uh, wilderness area where he was rescuing dogs. I couldn't believe what I saw. It was, it was, it was like the perfect thing for me to, to see that because a lot of people have rescue organizations, but they didn't do the exact same thing that he did. And as soon as I saw that, I just knew that it was different and it was special and I had to volunteer. So I, had, I found a number in the, in, the, in the article, and I called. I said, look, I, uh, thank you, but uh, you know, I don't have any place for you to come. I mean, I have dogs at home. I, I'm, I'm looking for a place, a uh, kennel. And she says, well, I don't care. I'll do anything. I want to help. At first, he was kind of testing me just to make sure that I was you know, genuine about my interests. So he had me come over, and he put me to work, basically picking up dog dew in the backyard, because there was lots of it, because he had 29 dogs back there. I had litters of puppies that had parvo as a new thing, a new disease back then. And I treated them at home, and they survived. I don't know today how I did it, but I, I, they did. So I had, you know, ultimately 29 dogs in this place in Glendale, which eventually got me in trouble. I found El Monte, Dana, and then some others that were a couple other close friends of mine at the time, cleaned it with me. We go down, in fact, she brought her family and her sister and her husband and her parents and I don't know. People came from her and then people came from my other friends and they helped me physically clean El Monte. We had a half acre shelter to clean. I had to flame it, I had to chemical it, I had to dig it, I had to wash it. I mean, there's so much stuff to do. And in a month, I had it ready, and then we moved in, I don't know, 150 dogs that, I mean, these were dogs that I knew. I knew them personally, they were hanging out in the woods, I didn't have any place to bring them. So when I got El Monte, it was like a really fun time. Now I could go out and every, I mean, I opened the doors, jump in, and they jump in the car, and I take them down El Monte. About two years ago, I formed Delta. Dedication Everlasting Love to Animals, which is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're getting contributions to help feed the animals, and uh, now, of course, uh, we have our own uh, kennel. We're uh, uh, in the process of buying. We're trying to raise the money for that. In the last four years, we've found and placed over 800 dogs and probably about 300 cats. I knew he was exceptional. There was nobody doing anything like it anywhere. It was completely unique. I always had the feeling it was, it was completely from his heart. There was no other reason. I mean, he was going to devote his entire life to helping these animals because it hurt him so much to see them out there getting dumped. El Monte was a big step uh, from getting out of his house. But what he really always wanted and always intended to have was a, a large piece of property 
somewhere which he could expand on and just keep bringing the animals in. When I first saw the land in Acton that I was going to build on, I mean, 23 acres was pretty big back then in my mind. You know, it's hills and I knew I could do it. I mean, if it's for the animals, I could do anything. I knew I could pull it off. But again, what do I do? What do I do? What's right for the animals? Well, what's right for the animals is to get the land in Acton and build a shelter. Well, OK, we do that. Let me go and look at his chart first to make sure that we didn't put him on CD for a reason. I think he just needs to be on maintenance. You can use this for some of the older dogs. Adult conditioning, all this. We've got growth. I want, a, I want two cases of this and two cases of this at the hospital. How's the white count? Is it low? Well, he came in with a BUN of 77 and a creatinine of 3.89. What are you doing over here? What are you doing over here? What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Look at the kids. Look at the kids. One August, 1988, I was up at uh, Ventura County. On a Sunday afternoon, just, you know, have something to eat, go look at the water. You go look at the water, you look down, there's all these cats. And a lot of them were sick. So I said, I've got to do something about it. Now, there's nothing to eat out here, except what the campers had thrown out in the trash. And now that it's fall, the campers have left, and uh, nobody's feeding these cats. So this is the time of year that I come in and trap them and take them to the shelter, because otherwise, is in fact, if I wait too much longer and the rains come, they get sick, then it's a real problem. <laughs> Here's a nice, nice little place to hide in here. Look at this. If I were a cat, I'd want to be up one of these limbs. Well, I think it's time for me to set out the traps. He's watching me. He's watching me. I can see him. I'm going to walk straight for him. Make believe I don't see him. I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to walk away. Yep, he sees it. He's got to go back and get it now. He's going to have to open that, that Sheba lid. One more step. Got him, right there. Ants everywhere, huh? Hi, honey. OK, OK. There's ants all over this thing. Okay, take it easy. Take it easy. 
Take it easy. Don't get scared. This is a wild kitty. Okay. Okay. I got one with a hurt leg. Hi, little one. Okay, baby. Oh, okay, she's scared. Oh, okay, easy, easy, easy. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, there's three more. Okay, we gotta hurry and reload them. Okay, I gotta do a count here. We get two over there, two over here. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo! <laughs> eight of them. Now what I have to do here is, after I've got the last one, I gotta lay all the traps out for about an hour and sit on them. The worst thing is to leave just one all by himself. So we've got to make absolutely sure I get them all. Okay, sweetie. Okay, sweetie. I've got two rescues going. I got a dog with, I got four traps out for a dog and about 200 acres of lemon grove. We were looking for some pups. There was a dead black dog out there with milk. And we're looking for her pups. And meanwhile, somebody dumped these pups. Is that as close as you're gonna come? Oh, they're hungry. Are you hungry? Oh, look at you. Uh, the mother's waiting. Okay, she sees me going. I gotta really stay hidden now, because uh, now I'm the enemy. It breaks your heart, you know. She's 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 crying. She's howling for her for her sibling. Hey, little baby. Oh, you look like a little girl too. Oh, you little sweetie. The hard life. Well, she's about three months old, maybe four. And she's been through hell already. And I didn't do anything but scare you, did I? Huh? Did I scare you, you poor thing? It's okay. Binoculars. Yeah. What color? White one. 
Uh, we got some business here. Okay, bye. This has to be the father. So we have a mother and a father. Yeah, well, I put, I put liver way down the end because my dogs can't resist it. Let me go over. I'll take some food and I'll go over and you can just see if anything happens. And okay, you saw me. He made me. I've been made. He ate a lot of the liver. The only stuff he didn't touch was the stuff in the back of the trap. Okay, I'm going to dump off all the bait here so they'll get used to eating from us. Uh, we've got to come out and do this a bunch of times so they get used to the trap. They'll start picking all this, all this food off. When we were out looking for the pups the other day from the mother that was killed on the side of the road, I'm pretty sure these are them. She looked just like these two black ones, and the other ones have a lot of her markings, too. So what happened was I asked the parks people to uh, keep an eye out for any abandoned puppies, because if the mother was killed, then whoever let the mother just roam didn't care that much about her. So um, um, I figured, well, the next thing is they're going to have these puppies, no mother to take care of them. Now they have to start feeding them. They're going to get rid of them. So. The parks people kept watching. And then uh, yesterday in the morning, they found that these guys were abandoned down, down in the woods over there. It's sort of like, you know, when she's lying there, she was, she was just killed within the hour, and you kind of promise her that, you know, you're going to find her babies. And I said, we'll look everywhere and try to find them. We'll take care of them for you. Boy, they're smart. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get her. This chicken there, one more step. Her left foot, if she moves her left foot, boy, she's got a long reach. She's got a long reach. Go ahead, move your right foot now. One more, come on, come on, come on. Take one step, just one step. That's smart she is, she won't step on that trigger. There's the pup. Just watching, just resting, tired. Got a problem. She's not up and running around, she's tired. She knows there's food there and she's tired. I've got to call the shelter. These poor dogs. How's Mallory, the white puppy I brought in uh, last week? All right, do a distemper titer on her, because her uh, Rachel that's still out here doesn't look so hot today. Run a parvo, too, and, and just leave a message on 9363 and let me know what it was. It's kind, of, it's kind of looking more like a parvo. All right, thanks. That's not good. See, the puppy's not even interested. She is moving slow, but then again, she's resting again. Now, what is this about? That's not good. Yeah, she's cocky, she'll get caught. That was a short trap, that's the problem with that one.
Well, I, I was over the other end and um, I saw him running across on that side. And I said, that's the guy, I just left him. So they get quite a range. I mean, they make a big circle. They're going down, they know where the pond is. Boy, he's smart. Look, they always look at the door and go, okay, let's see. Yep, there he goes. One more, one more, oh, come on. He tried to trip it, didn't he? <laughs> it looked like he stepped on it to trip it. Yeah, I think it gave on him a little bit. Boy, they're good, huh? Aren't they good? Yeah, that's smart. They come over and visit, huh? Hey, puppy. Hey, puppy. Okay, hey Meg, this is your mom. <laughs> Meg, this is you. There you are. There you are, Meg. Heartbeats and your little rhythm. And your daddy's girl. Okay, Maggie, there you are. There's baby Maggie. Look at the baby girl. See, she hears my voice and she quiets down. Baby Meg, look at the baby Meg. Hey Meg. Hey baby girl. You're a pretty girl. Oh, you're a pretty girl. Yes, you are. Look at the little tiny thing you were. Cat food, this is good stuff. Cat food, you're all gonna love this. He's got a guy got a German short hair, and I and these dogs are going around his German short hair. I said, keep your dog there. Keep your dog there. So I gotta catch these. And he's got this. He says, Who are you? I said, I can't get into it. I said, I can't get into it. I'm a good guy. Uh-oh. Well, we can't both do this. Hey, Gainer. How are you? You never sound excited to hear me. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. We've been out here catching dogs. I have a family of four, and I want to keep them uh, immediately together and outside so that they'll have to temp them and vaccinate them and stuff outside. So what I need is a dog yard for four dogs that are all black terriers. She was shivering this morning. I came and she was she was just shivering from the cold from the, the wet. Now if I had a year. I could get friendly with them and put a noose on them, and that's it. But with the parvo and distemper, we don't have a year. There's no one way to do anything. And you just keep trying different things and just never give up, you know? Just, just never give up. Rachel's sister turned out to be par uh, negative. She was uh, parvo negative and distemper negative. So that's good news. So at least up until the point we caught the sister, 
That means Rachel was clean. You gotta get her out of here. I mean, this is Parvo City. So fortunately, it's on the other side of the hill. If she strays into the other side of the hill just for a couple hours, she's gonna be exposed to the virus. No dogs here at all. This is bad. Now I gotta wait for her to get so sick that she can hardly move. And we're gonna have a hell of a time saving her. Very bad. So I'm out here, I had the flu for a couple of days, but I had to, I knew I had to get Rachel. We came down like 7.30, set up the trap, because I heard the day before she was kind of dragging around, she didn't look so well. Well, that could be the heat, you know, but I said, you know, I've got to get her. I got this feeling, I got to get Rachel. As I walked up in the hills here to, to see if I could find Rachel, I was so concerned about her. About 1.30 or so, this guy walks up to me and he says, are you Leo? And I went, yeah. And then he tells me a story about this dog that and he took her and he put her in his car. She threw up yellow foamy stuff in his car. And then he took her to the emergency clinic. And then they said that she probably had parvo and it would cost four or $500 to, to, to try to treat her and she might not make it. They advised that he put her to sleep. Now, when that gets my attention, I said to him, well, Wait a minute, wait a minute. A dog from here you took? Yeah, she's one of the three white ones over here. Well, that made me crazy. That's Rachel. My Rachel, this guy puts to sleep. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. I'm the best there is. There's nobody better. I am the absolute best. And I failed totally. That poor dog, that poor dog. When we lost her, I promised her that I'd get her parents. The animals that you see here um, are not really from these particular mountains, but maybe on the other side. But people dump them around the mountains. They go to picnic areas, campgrounds, they dump them. It's a beautiful day. You've been in the car a couple hours. You're, you're, you're just hardly tasting what they go through out there. They have no water. They come in at any age. They live out their life here. This is care for life. Everybody here is here for life. Our hospitals are here to care only for these animals. Care for life. We don't take homes away from anybody. Um, these animals are alive because you help support them every single month. Everybody's check is supporting these animals. Look it up on the internet, see how much money goes to the animals compared to everybody else. This is what you're paying for. How this organization grew and became the largest animal shelter in the world was just by telling people for 20 odd years over and over that animals are children. I mean, I write about them that way they are children and the people who you know support this organization recognize that they are children and they tell people and they tell people and they tell people you know we've mailed millions of pieces of mail all over this country for 20 years and a lot of people get the idea that animals are children through you know through the letters so that has been my theme from the beginning is just simply telling people what i feel and what i see and if you feel and see what, you know, what, what I do, then, you know, help me do this. And we've been able to build this largest of all shelters because of people like that. I'm going to lock this. Stacy and I were on a, a cat rescue when I first saw this dog carrying what I thought was a sack of rocks tied to his leg. That's what I thought happened to him. I came back over the next couple of days and nights and kept setting the traps. Eventually, one night, uh, I caught him along with a friend of his. I caught his friend first. There he is. 
He's so scared. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Where do you see the size of it? Look at the size of this tumor. That's the tumor down there. We're, we're going to give you a chance to get over this. I call them chance. <laughs> Let me get some blood on him, see what his blood work says, and we'll take an x-ray. Oh, look, he's got buckshot in him. Yep, so I'm shooting at him. This is just all soft tissue in the leg. Is it a hard stick? Holy cow, look right here. Yeah. See how the curve that uh, femur is right there? Uh -huh. That fracture is just healed on. Unassisted. He's probably been out there for a long time. Yeah. It wasn't easy to get him. Hi, baby boy. Oh, he's scared. It's all right, honey. Did you see that right leg? Weird, huh? That's bizarre. Leo, I'm fine, thanks. Got a real doozy there. Yeah, that was pretty big. I, when you told me about it, I thought it was higher up on the leg. That's real down by his foot. He's kind of been walking on it. Right. Well, I think for quite a while. It's pretty ulcerated along the bottom. Uh, dog's in pretty good health otherwise. Seems to be about seven to nine years old. When you run across someone who's uncompromising, um, it, it can become difficult because you give reasons why it can't happen and he wants to hear the reasons why it can happen. Uh, he, he's a, a person that expects results. Uh, he does not want to be told that, uh, in particular from my perspective, I'm dealing with the health care of these animals. And sometimes we run into situations that are, are difficult at best. And uh, he doesn't want to hear about how difficult it, it is. He wants to hear what we're doing to make the situation better. And uh, from that standpoint, uh, it, it, it can be difficult, but uh, it's because he has, he is without doubt um, focused of purpose more than any human being that I have, that I have ever met before. He weighs five pounds with a toe. Five pounds with a toe. See, I called from the road and told these girls we were, that Leo was trying to get this dog with a five pound tumor. I could hear Shelly, I just could feel her going, yeah, right, five pound tumor hanging on its foot. Gotta be five pounds. You know, as long as this dog has had this, it has to be benign. It has to be. Right. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Give me a Oh, look at the face. Look at the face. You're so pretty. Some bastard threw him out. Some other bastard shot him. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, okay, we take good care of you. I'm trying to get Stacy to let me take him home. Oh, really? Well, we get this thing, I get so many animals. Mm -hmm. So I gotta wait a while. This is great, she's in heat. Oh yeah. All right, the white, the white male's afraid of him. See, this is, this is a dog with a collar. You know, these, these people let their dogs roam. You come with me? Come on, come on. You wanna come with me? No? Okay. Oh, he just wants the girl. The plan is to camouflage the trap. She's in heat. Rachel's mother's in heat. So I've been feeding her in that spot. The plan is to get her to the trap. You're gonna just tempt her big time. Beautiful. That was a good shot. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, come on. All right. Got to get out the cans. 
Get out the mighty dog. It's okay, come on, I'm going this way. She's waiting for the cans. That's an hors d'oeuvre, come on. You lead them to water and they don't pay any attention. They don't want help. People don't want help, sometimes animals don't want help. She's acting like she's not even hungry, you know? We come up at 5.30 in the morning, I start to get here, and she like doesn't give a shit. You know, today I'm not hungry. Give me a chance, there's my boy. Give me a chance. Give me a chance, look at him. Oh, he's a sweetie pie. So he's gonna do just fine. You're doing good today, huh? And he's walking great. Give me a chance. See, I, I've used all my skills, all my previous life experience to catch these guys. <laughs> this is a fishing net. So I'll crawl in there and set these two. And I'm gonna tie it to the plate so that when he picks up the bone, he'll pull the release. Babies are growing bones right now, and she needs extra calcium. Good. He's heading out. He got something in his mouth. He's coming around the front. He's got something. Cheese. He took the tray out already. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, we didn't do that with the bones, and I got him. I got him. He's going in. Did you see that? Yeah. But he sort of, he pulled on something, though. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get that. Mom's going around to the front of the gate. Uh, that's correct. She took something out. She got a bone. Oh, Shirley, you didn't come back. I'll just put it in the park here. He's going back in. He's a little bit, uh, he's still, man, they know something's going on. He got something, he's backing out. I say his shoulders are right at the gate door. He's sniffing the top. He's backing out, he got a tray. He got a tray and he's gonna come over here and show us. Well, he just dumped the mighty dog on the ground. She's walking around, she's out front now. She's going to the back of the trap, looking in the back of the trap. She's sniffing, sniffing the back of the trap. Yeah, she's still fat. Actually, her breasts are starting to show more, too. She's going up towards the water area. Coming around the back side. She's heading up the hill. So we know she's had her puppies. And somewhere up to the left, of that dog house where we're feeding that's where she's that's where she's got a den you know i'm starting to wonder if it isn't underground i wonder if she hadn't dug in because we can't see her she just disappears from the from the view so she's got to be going in i found the pup
Look at you. <laughs> oh, you beautiful babies. Okay. Okay. There's my little brown guy. I knew not to shower this morning, as I'll be doing that later. First, I'm gonna get me some puppies. Okay. Okay, you guys. Okay, stay there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here's what we need. Get to tie you up. All right, don't worry, here you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm tired. He has one that uh, he's keeping to try and get the mom in. Oh, fine, okay. Some shade. Okay. Well, if Stacy's right, she'll come back. Stacy says she'll come back. Stay there and get her, because they don't want to bottle feed the puppies. <laughs> they don't want to have to bottle feed the puppies every three, four hours. Get the mother. God. I can't believe this is going to go on again. This is going to go on and on and on and on. I'm getting old with this one. I first met him when he was a fine young actor, handsome young man, leading roles, leading parts. Many of the actresses of today went on. He decided to change his uh, course of action. He began to rescue animals. It's an obsession with him. You see, Leo doesn't just rescue them off the streets. He goes out into the deserts. And once a year, I say, Leo, come on in here. Let's talk about our four-footed friends. Welcome, Leo Grillo. Thank you, George. There is nothing more musical to me than the sound of that trap door coming down when that dog is finally safe. I had one uh, off the freeway last week that uh, was an amazing rescue. It just took forever, but it, 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 uh, I, I got the dog off the freeway into a residential area, and then he was going back on the freeway. And I, have, I carry a trap, and all my vehicles have traps in them for freeway dogs. And uh, I set this one up, and eventually um, I got him. But I remember the moment he went in there. I mean, you got to remember he was he was going to die a second, you know, before I showed up. He was like ready to dart into the traffic. You know, there are moments on this program that you cherish. Moments like these I cherish. Oh, we can talk about politics and world affairs and what's wrong with the government and what's wrong. But when you get right down to helping an animal, a person, most of all. An oldster, a youngster, a little puppy or kitten in distress, you feel as though you've done something, as though you've done something good. I have 1,200 animals. You can't take them all home. Oh. Um, we have a huge shelter. There are two dogs in every yard, and we have a bunch of yards, and there's 94 acres of dogs out there, and uh, not to mention cats. We have about 500 cats. The, the thing is, after 20 years, I've got to tell you that, that um, sadly, not too much is changing out there. I mean, we could do the same show we did 17 years ago or 18 years ago. It's about the same. All right. 
We're going to be back with Leo in just a moment. AM870, KIEV, it's your talk station. All right, I've got the fence crew. I don't, I don't see any dogs uh, watching us, but uh, they've got to be out there. I want to put the gate facing that way. Now, you got a butterfly latch, right? Yeah, because what I'm going to do, I, I got these dogs that are going to come in and eat inside the fence. Then I got some fishing line, and I'm going to be over there, and I'm going to pull the gate closed, so I need the butterfly. He's cutting off the tops of the pipes to make them smooth because we're putting extenders on the top. The extenders are going to go reach in, and then we're going to put some wire on the top of the extender, so that way if the dogs run up the side of the fence and they try to get out, they're going to be faced with one of these. They're going to run up and fall back. They'll come straight up the fence. If they try to climb, their weight is against them, and, and they fall backwards. Okay, we'll get out of here and let them come in here and get used to their new place. Okay. And I'll set this up over here. I'll be inside of it. When the dogs come down, after I finish wrapping the top of it, I'll be inside the uh, tent with my string. And then I'll just go like this. I'll pull it. Got him. What I'm worried about is that this gate is at a different angle than it has been. And then the shiny string, the fishing line, it's all gonna be dependent on where the sun is. If the sun is down, they might not see this. And they might come tonight and they won't see it at all. I'm more worried about this little change in the angle of the fence because these guys are so sharp. They just sense it. in this thing, I can pretty much see him. Got a bead on him. He's way up on top of the uh, trail, way up on top. The tail's way up in the air. He's heading. Uh, I'm going for her. Okay, get moving. By the time I got halfway across the yard, which is only 24 feet, by the time I got halfway across, she had pounded on the bottom fence near the ground and it opened it, bent it an inch, and had her nose through. 
and she struggled so hard and then she got her face through and her ne in, 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 in seconds she flattened out like a cockroach on her side and went under the fence and just opened it maybe two inches I mean, and I watched her go off into the hills I mean I'm heartbroken here because I lost her This obsession, total obsession, she doesn't want it. She didn't want me to take her. What am I doing? They don't want the help, and how many times do they tell you they don't want the help, and you're still trying to help them? And you're killing yourself doing it. When do you wake up? That woke me up. And I gave up. I gave up on the obsession. And I said, I just got to relax. I've got a baby now, too, and I've got to spend some time with her instead of always being sick. I'm talking, I'm in the field four, five, six hours trying to catch one dog. I finally ran into some dogs that I cannot catch. Because she'll never come near me again. She knows what I'm doing and she thinks, she thinks I'm her enemy and I'm the one person in the whole world killing himself trying to save her. And uh, that's hard. It's hard to, you know, you're doing the right thing for somebody and no matter what you do, you know, you're the enemy. Now, hey, I don't care. I get her, I don't get it or whatever, you know. And the only thing that was a fire burning was that she gets pregnant and has more litters, you know, and I got to stop that. Uh, I wouldn't pass up an opportunity, but I wasn't, like, losing sleep at night. I like her. Looks like she took something and she's eating it inside on the ground just behind the cage. Moving. Okay, she's coming out into view. And she's moving off. That looks like her. She's in the brush. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, this is good. They're barking at each other. Good, I got a fix on them. Okay, it would be the two males. Three, I count three. This is her. All right, she's behind the cage. That is definitely her. Now he's eating outside the gate. She's watching him. Wouldn't it be some if I caught them both, huh? Okay, she's definitely behind the cage. As we keep her brother out of this. Okay, I got a bead on her. Doing. She's behind a tree, I can't really tell, but I definitely know it's all right. He's in, the, the Roddy's in. She's watching him. She's going to the right. She's going back in the brush. Well, it's a thousand to one. Any day we come out here is a thousand to one. I figured that out. So better luck tomorrow, I guess. Or not. We just keep trying. We're going to get her. I hope it's this year. <laughs>
Here she is. Here she is. Okay, okay. We're just watching you. She sees us. Hey, Mama. Yep. Oh, my God. See, so she's covered in mud from, from the rains. Well, I don't want her to think I'm chasing her. Let me see where she's going. Okay. She's staying on the... Okay, okay. We're just watching you. Man, look at, look at that. Oh, boy. Well, given the terrain, there are only so many dens that she can have down there. Oh, my God. This is not good. This is not good. We gotta go. Some bastard shot him. Puppy. Boy, she's smart. My kingdom for a shovel. For four feet, and then it turns, and the chamber's over here, out of view. I found the den. She built a magnificent structure. Okay, uh, make sure Romano's lights are flashing. You call it, dog man. Sounds like a puppy's gut. Mm. Upper respiratory. Mm. Isn't that wheezing? Hey, little girl. Hey, little girl. I got waterproof clothes on today. Okay, there you go. Uh, we got six-week-old pups. We've got five of them, maybe six. I lost count. All right, so get ready for them, uh, at least. That means we're out of here. We got the pups. I'm just going to check one more time in there, but we've got all the pups. Okay. Hey, you little girls and boys, you're gonna be fine. Where do you see how spoiled you get? Look at, look at, look at how healthy. And because we're feeding the mother, you know, she's making milk. We're giving her cottage cheese, you know. But look how healthy they are.
And then one day in the spring, almost two years later, I just got a feeling of enthusiasm. And what am I enthusiastic about? I'm enthusiastic about catching Moby, that I named her, you know, and her brother. It just feels right. So I, you know, called the team in, uh, let's photograph this, I think I'm gonna get her. The grass was tall, the brush was filled out, I could hide better. Two white dogs are coming down and two other ones. They're coming down pretty close. The moment I pulled in, this dog saw me, and she had a beat on me the entire time. She knew I was there, and yet she still came, and she still went in, and she brought her brother in, and she didn't go all the way to the back until her brother was with her. Okay, it's all about building up confidence. Got to let her get secure. Hope that the two of them go in. Uh, but she's on red alert. I could see her face. One false move and she was gone. Okay, is this boy or girl? They're both there. Okay, do you see one or two on that side? There's two over here. There's two over here. Okay, then we gotta get them both in. Just start yelling, go, 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 when I slam that gate if I do get them. Okay, they picked up on the wire. We gotta string it from the top. Stringing it on the grass is making too much noise now that the grass is high.
we were running them down and you know letting them wear themselves out, I noticed she sat down. Moby sat down and watched us, and she smiled, and she watched us. Eventually, I went in. She went into a doghouse, and I, I was while I was, you know, working on her brother. I mean, I looked over, and she's, you know, smiling, sitting there. Okay. All right, you're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Come on. You know, some of your babies are bigger than you. You gotta look at it this way. If I get a serious puncture wound, that's the first one in about 15 years. Who better? <laughs> Who better to deliver the message? <laughs> Jimmy, you got a big gash in your head. Man, his head's wide open. That's not from us. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks a little older, didn't it? Yeah. Why don't you make it to my van, see if you can find that leash. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I. Do this. If we do this, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What should we do here? Okay, watch this. All right. Got another problem. Give me that gate. This one here. Yeah. Okay. Now be careful this looks like it wants to come out. What's up? Come on. Okay. Okay. Easy baby. Easy baby. I don't know if you can see this. I put on two different boots this morning by mistake in the dark. This boot is from two years ago. I was chasing Rachel and I ran into a sprinkler, a sprinkler head and it tore the shit out of my boot. And I said, gee, I'm glad it's not my skin. So this morning, I just noticed I was in the tent waiting for them. I looked down, they went, I got two different boots on. In fact, this one's from two years ago. It's like we have come full circle. And so I was, I was saying this, just might be the lucky day. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I can't help but think that Rachel's here, watching me keep a promise. And then I thought, I'll be damned. Look what she did. She decided that it was time she decided it was time to come in. She decided for her brother's sake. It's okay. He was torn up with infections in his head and his side. This guy was in trouble. She decided that I'm there, my brother's hurt, my brother is in trouble, now's the time. And she went in and she caused that whole thing to happen. Yeah, he's got a bad wound that's infected. It's all pussed over. The last thing I'll do is give him a shot of antibiotics because uh, in case it stings. I'm gonna pack, pack that wound in his head. see each other. Oh, my God. 
when you were a baby, just born, I found the mommy and the daddy. They're over there. That's Moby and Nemo. And then for the whole first two years while you were little, I found all of these dogs when they were puppies. Three bunches of puppies. I carried them when they were little tiny babies, and I, I came home and then I carried you. That's a girl. Look at the bit. Oh, Peggy, these. I think this is the this is the last litter that I had. Cause see how friendly they are. Yeah. The second last litter, rather. Cause I'm gonna sh show you after how when I found them, they were just little tiny, like three week old babies, and we had to bottle feed them. Yeah. Look at they all want to say hi. Look at these guys. Look at, you. Look at these guys. You. Look at the baby. What do I say besides um, mm -hmm, you can, and you nodding? Ask me, ask me questions. Like what? Ask me where did I get that dog. How old are you? No, where did you get that dog? Okay. I'm going to teach you absolutely everything you need to know so that when you're old enough to run it, you're going to run it like a pro. This is the only one in the world. There's nothing else like this. Is there anything you want to say to Romano before we go? I don't know. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> Say something nice. Hey, Mano. Nothing nice. You know what? No, no, you, no. We're rolling. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. See, no, that's usually that, that's usually the way. See, all the, all these years we've been doing this. How many times you hear Romano, who's on camera, talking during the thing, which is great because we have a conversation and people get to know what we're doing. It was all it all worked out great. You're the future.